Almost 150 years ago, in 1878, during what's called the Golden Age of Cigars, a British publication listed the best cigar brands in the world. This fascinating list of brands gives us a peek into what was perceived as the gold standard of cigars a century and a half ago. Some of these brands we recognize today, but some are long forgotten. So as mentioned, this list is exceedingly old. And as a result, there are unfortunately a few brands whose history and memory have long been lost to time. On this list, La Paz de China, El Gaucho, and V. Arango are sadly rendering no results whatsoever. The brand Jose Morales at least brings up some vintage pictures and boxes, but no historical mentions or information is available. Most of the brands, though, reveal some rich and interesting information. Firstly, we see Partagas mentioned. Don Jaime Partagas y Ravel created the brand all the way back in 1845. Don Jaime is said to have hired one of the first lectors to read books to and entertain all the cigar rollers as they worked in his factory. He was later mysteriously murdered on one of his plantations in 1868, leading to his son taking over the brand. Partagas is still one of the world's biggest brands today, 180 years after its inception, and a true example of excellence. Next up, we have Calliope, a brand name that seems to have been used several different times by many separate Cuban cigar companies. This was a trend that became quite evident when researching these old Havana cigar brands. It can be found made by Barons and Company in the late 1800s, but the brand mentioned in this list is most likely that of famed German cigar maker Louis Marx. In a 1903 New York Times article, he's quoted as being the largest individual grower of wrapper tobacco on the island and an extensive property owner in Havana. A 1952 book called The Dictionary of Cigars attributes Don Louis Marx as the man that introduced the cheesecloth me method of growing wrapper tobacco to Cuba. This is a method still used today to make shade-grown tobacco. Not much else is known of the fate of Louis Marx or his once-famed cigar brands. Another German cigar legend, Hermann Upmann, is featured on this list. His brand, one that still lives and prospers today, began in 1844. A successful banker as well as a cigar maker, Upman is credited with inventing packaging cigars in cedar boxes, something we still do today. Hermann returned to Germany, but the brand stayed with the family and was even connected with a spy network during World War I, which perhaps is a story for another time. His H. Upman brand of cigars is as popular today as ever and actually one of my personal favorites. A brand with a much foggier fate in this list is La Carolina of Bances y Suarez, which only yields some pictures, but no historical da data other than some evidence that the trademark has run out long ago. One can only wonder what the fate of some of these brands and companies were. La Intimidad by Antonino Caruncho y Mendes Vigo was a Cuban brand that was typically known on the island for its small formats. In 1840, he founded the tobacco factory of the same name, which was located at the time of the corner of Neptuno in Havana. The La Intimidad brand became famous internationally, and a few years after this British list of best brands was published, the tobacco business was leased to the much bigger Henry Clay and Bock company. This ended up obscuring the La Intimidad brand a bit, and eventually it would fade away. Speaking of Henry Clay though, our next brand on the list was obscurely enough named after an American politician who ran for president unsuccessfully several times. The Spaniard Julian Alvarez, who started the brand in the 1840s, chose the name on a whim while brainstorming. He thought it might work well in the United States, which he was completely right about. Henry Clay became a massive cigar brand and it is actually still popular in the States today, although nowadays it has no connection to Cuba. Ramon Ayones, a huge brand at the time, is unsurprisingly mentioned. It was founded in 1837 and is often credited as the brand that began the widespread use of colorful box art, 
and perhaps even more importantly, the first brand to utilize bans on cigars. Ramon Ayones survived all throughout the Cuban Revolution and was chosen as one of the brands that will remain under the Habanas portfolio after all the Cuban brands were nationalized. Almost 200 years later, it's still around today and a very popular brand among aficionados of Cuban cigars. Confederación Suiza seems to be a diplomatic brand made by Ramon Ayones for Switzerland. Not much more is known about this brand and it's kind of interesting that such a line of cigars, which is seemingly unattainable for the general public, would be included in this list. Cabarga y Compañía made the famous La Corona brand. The brand, along with H. Upman, is actually named as one of the most luxurious available in another contemporary 1870s book called About Cigars. La Corona was established around 1845 and continued to be produced in small quantities after the Cuban embargo, until it was discontinued around 1978. The brand was relaunched in 1989 as an inexpensive machine-made cigar, but it was again discontinued only 10 years later in 1999. The La Corona factory, however, is still very much active today and is one of the most legendary factories in all of Cuba. Next up, La Española, which was made by Celorio y Compañía. All that can be found out about this brand of cigars and its company is its listing as a producer in a very old traveler's guide on Cuba. This company seems to have had a very short-lived period of success in those late 1800s when this list was first produced. Now, it's simply a relic of a bygone age. A. Murias y Compañía is the brand of Antonio Murias. Funnily enough, his brother Pedro Murias is a much more historically relevant character in the world of Cuban cigar history. It is also in Pedro's legendary La Meridiana factory that the A. Murias brand was produced. Several other legendary Cuban cigar brands were also produced in this factory, but it's for some reason that the A. Murias y Compañía brand is mentioned in this list. As time went on, the rights for A. Murias y Compañía seems to have exchanged hands several times and slowly disappeared from relevancy. The La Meridiana factory building, where the brand was once made, still stands in Havana today though. Antonio Villar started the Villar y Villar factory and subsequent brand in 1870. And as this list of best brands was written in 1878, the brand must have quickly become very popular. It was sold to the Cuban Tobacco Company, Inc. of America in 1902 and later sold again 30 years later in 1932. Although the brand remained popular well into the 1900s, its popularity seemed to teeter out slowly and after those several transfers of ownership is today a mere memory. The oldest still active cigar brand is often said to be Por La Rañaga, founded in 1834 which also happens to be included in this list. Ignacio, or perhaps he was called Ambrosio, started the brand that became famous for its consistency as well as its high variety of prices. Although a comparatively small brand, it's still produced by Habanos and enjoyed by countless cigar smokers. Older still was the brand Cabañas, the first name to ever be registered in Havana's trademark office entered in 1810. The registration for one factory and a shop is still preserved in the Cuban National Archives. In 1810, they had 16 workers, and quickly by 1933, cigars made by Cabañas were already being sold on the other side of the world in London, England. Each line of Cabañas maintained its own distinct flavor through carefully guarded blends and variations of plant types and processing techniques just as is the case with cigars today. The brand died with the turmoil of the Cuban Revolution, but it was brought back by Habanos for production for a quick time in 1989, only to 2005. In 2019 though, Don Pepin resurrected the brand name with a new non-Cuban version, which is now available in the US. The list is such a captivating collection of some brands that remain a mystery even today and 
some that have enjoyed marginal success, and others that, against all odds, still survive and prosper in the 21st century. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick trip back in time to a different age and era of cigars.